Now that the All-Star game is over, the mindset shifts to the trade deadline at the end of the month. Every team must make the conscious decision to go all in, trade off all their valuable pieces, or find a mix of the two. And I'm here to tell you what each of these teams should do at the trade deadline. Starting off in the NL Central, we have the Milwaukee Brewers. Currently set seven games above 500 and one game outside of the division, the Brewers are in a spot to go all in. However, they will need a big second half of the year to keep up with the blistering hot Cincinnati Reds, and that starts by grabbing a few bats. Players like Jesse Winker and Rowdy Telez have had disappointing returns, and the team also lacks a consistent bat in the outfield aside from Christian Yelich. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of great names floating around the trade deadline market, but I would love to see them go for Elaine Thomas of the Nationals, Brent Rooker of the Athletics, and Randall Gritchett of the Rockies. Flipping to the American League side of things, let's talk about the Texas Rangers. Everybody knows how good this team has been this year. Like, it feels like the All-Star game was just the Rangers versus the National League. Everyone on this team is crushing the baseball, and with the trade for Aroldis Chapman earlier this month, the only hole that really can be found is in the rotation. Avaldi has been fantastic so far this season, but they need another front-end starter with Jacob deGrom going down. This team would be doing great if they add a Max Scherzer or Lucas Giolito, and if they want to continue to add to the bullpen, sure, go for it. Back in the NL Central, we have my favorite team, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Wow, the collapse of this team should be put in a museum, and it leaves them in a weird spot. I think this season should have been, and always will be, a transition year. You have a lot of guys coming up and making their debuts, and I would like to see these dudes continue to do that. For that reason, I would love to see this team trade off some of the veteran pieces and continue to allow that pipeline of players to make their way up, and get basically anything back. However, I would like the Pirates to maintain their current stars like Bednar, Keller, Reynolds, and Sawinski. Names like Santana, Choi, Hedges, and even a guy like Rodolfo Castro could find their way onto the trade block. Heading out west, I have the Colorado Rockies. This is the first clear seller I have in the video. The problem with this team is the trade pieces aren't very enticing, and some of the names that are left are just injured. The most notable name on the roster is Ryan McMahon, but with so much control left on his contract, I'm not sure the Rockies are ready to move on from the third baseman. Another name is Elias Diaz, but it's tough to move on from catchers at the deadline. So that really just leaves me with names like Randall Gritchett, Charlie Blackman if he can return from injury, and CJ Krohn. The fifth team on the list is the New York Mets. Wow, what an interesting team to talk about. Their team has fallen well short of expectations, and now they're left with a really tough decision about the rest of their season. If I were the Mets, I would think they're way too far to just trash the project entirely. I would like to see the Mets trade some of their veteran pieces that won't return next season without barring a new contract. Those names include Max Scherzer, who could return on a player option, Carlos Carrasco, David Robertson, and Tommy Pham. A team who is playing surprisingly well is the Miami Marlins. I think it would be fair to say the Marlins are outperforming expectations. A lot of their team stats are around the middle of the pack, and their expected win total is actually below 500. With all that being said, they're doing all of this with their two biggest stars in Alcantara and Chisholm not really performing up to their expected stats. I don't expect to see the Marlins very active at the deadline, and I can only see them grabbing a piece for the bullpen or maybe a middle-of-the-order bat. Heading back out west, the San Francisco Giants are the next team to grace the list. The Giants are one star bat away from being a ridiculously good baseball team. Unfortunately for the Giants, they aren't that many big name bats that fit the bill for what they need. You could look for a guy like Randall Gritchett from the Rockies to split some time with Jock Peterson or Conforto, but there really isn't a middle of the order guy that they could get. Other than that, you could maybe see the Giants go grab some starting pitching depth. Finally, moving to the American League, the Houston Astros have been slightly below expectations this season. Losing Justin Verlander is starting to show on this team, and their biggest addition of the offseason and Jose Abreu has not been up to snuff so far this year. Off the back of that, I can see the Astros being one of the teams in the running for big-name pitchers like Max Scherzer or Lucas Giolito. I can also see the Astros go and grab a catcher from the mix like Yasmani Grandal or Jan Gomes. Moving north of the border, the Toronto Blue Jays have constructed a considerably strong roster that is in a slugfest to keep pace in the wild card. When looking to the team, the biggest weakness lie on the pitching side. I think this team could be in play for any of the big bullpen arms or front of the line starters, unless they really believe in Alec Manoa to make that full turnaround. Moving to the Big A, we had the best team so far in the MLB, the Atlanta Braves. It's crazy to think that this team is so stacked that Spencer Strider hasn't even been the best pitcher on this team. If you're wanting me to be overcritical, maybe you can see the Braves try to grab another corner outfielder or maybe a bullpen arm. But again, this team is stacked. There really isn't that much to be critical of. Moving to a team still in the hunt, but not in the same way, it is the Cleveland Guardians. The Guardians are going to need to grab a couple of bats from the trade market. I can definitely see the Guardians in on some guys like Brent Rooker or Randall Gritchick. 
The Guardians are not going to be that active at the deadline, unfortunately, and it stinks, because if this pitching staff got to the postseason, it could be dangerous. Similar to the Mets, the Padres are in a position where they went all in, and it didn't work. And I think they should take a similar approach to what I said the Mets should do, and sell the pieces that they cannot bring back without another deal. Those pieces are mainly Blake Snell and Josh Hader both of which are performing really well this season and should return a decent haul. Whether you want to get some prospects or some MLB level guys, it is whether you believe in the sustainability of the project. Another failed project brings us to the south side of Chicago. At this point, I would almost like to see the White Sox blow it all up, salvage what they can in a couple stars, mainly Luis Robert and maybe Eloy Jimenez, and as far as I'm concerned, everyone else should be on the block. The return that the White Sox could get for trading Lynn, Grandal, Moncana, Hendricks, Anderson, and Giolito should be enough to jumpstart the next era of baseball on the south side of Chicago. Containing the train of disappointing teams, we have the Kansas City Royals. The best piece of advice I can give this team is to make the most of the aging veterans on this team. I wouldn't expect Jordan Lyles, Scott Barlow, or Brad Keller to really be on this team after the deadline, and the team should consider moving names like Perez and Grinke, but I know that probably won't happen. Finally, looking to a team that has exceeded expectations, let's go to Tampa Bay. The Rays are always aggressive at the deadline, but not for the headline guys you would expect. I think this team will make efforts to improve their pitching. With McClanahan going down with injury, the team could use another starter, but who knows with how the Rays alienate the position. Heading to the desert, we have the Diamondbacks who have taken the league by storm. Currently tied with the Dodgers for first place in the NL West, nobody could have really seen this coming. With that being said, the team will probably need some additions at the deadline to keep pace with the aggressive counterparts. Behind Zach Gallon and Merrill Kelly, the pitching on this team really falls off. I'd love to see them add both a starter and some bullpen help. They should be in on the same list of guys at the top, like Max Scherzer and Lucas Giolito. Back to the list of disappointing teams, let's take a look at the St. Louis Cardinals. Nothing about this team, especially from the pitching side, has worked this season, and it could be really the end of an era in St. Louis. I don't really think it's necessary for this team to offboard all of their pieces, namely the stars at the top like Arenado, Goldschmidt, or Contreras. Instead, I would like to see the Cardinals offboard some of their starters now and really go into the offseason with an emphasis on rebuilding the pitching staff. Heading east, let's take a look at last year's World Series loser in the Philadelphia Phillies. With the only hope for the Phillies to make another wildcard run, the team has really fallen short of expectations some people had set for them. In the wake of Reese Hopkins' injury and Alec Bohm's struggles, this team has really been searching for answers at the corner infield spots, and the team could find that across the division in Jamer Candelario. And from the pitching side, the Phillies should be big on this lefty starter like Jordan Montgomery from the St. Louis Cardinals, as well as a dominant closer like Josh Hader. Returning to the NL Central, I have a unique spot with the Chicago Cubs. Much like the Pirates, I would like to see them trade some pieces that just don't make sense for the roster after this year and do a lot to retain the core of the current roster. The 20th team on the list is the blistering hot Cincinnati Reds. Assuming the Reds decide to go all in this season off of the back of everything that's happened within the last month or so, they need to commit to pitching. Luckily for this team, they tend to be a bit of a pitching factory, so they really don't necessarily need to go for the highest profile guy to get results. Another team in search of pitching help is the Los Angeles Dodgers. None of the big name starters on this team came as advertised aside from Clayton Kershaw, and adding another guy to the bullpen can always help. Maybe a reunion between the Dodgers and Scherzer? Who knows? Next up on the list is the Detroit Tigers, and boy, there is not much that needs to be said. Just sell off what you can, Michael Lorenzen, Eduardo Rodriguez, Jake Marisnik, just sell them all off, and hope that you can get something back to get this rebuild headed in the right direction. Within the division, you have the Minnesota Twins, who probably should be the odds-on favorite to win the division, despite being a half a game back at the All-Star break. The Twins pitching has been fantastic so far this year and just needs some offensive production before the deadline. With the hopeful bounce back of Correa and Buxton, the team could really use some more production from the outfield slot. Castro, Taylor, and Kepler have not been hitting at a high enough clip to be everyday starters for this team to make a playoff push. Having Duvall from the Red Sox would be a fun, sneaky option to see the Twins grab before the deadline. Speaking of the Red Sox, they're another one of these interesting teams that's future is really up in the air. If I were them, I would trade off some of the aging pieces that would not return unless given another deal. The previously mentioned Adam Duvall, James Paxton, and Enrique Hernandez would all be pieces that could get something back for what might help your team next season, or if they get prospects back, the team can always go into free agency and do better. Staying in the AL East is the Baltimore Orioles. Slowly but surely, the Orioles have been closing ground on the Tampa Bay Rays that are only two games back. They expect the numbers should say they should be around 12 game back, so they need to take advantage of the situation and improve upon the current roster. Unfortunately, I don't have high expectations for the team to actually go out and make those moves, 
if they were to grab a piece of the deadline, starting pitching has to be at the top of the list. As of right now, they don't have a top of the line starter, and I'd love to see them go after one of the big name guys. Heading out west, we have the Los Angeles Angels. Less than a month ago, they were in serious consideration that the team would blow up and Otani would be the biggest piece ever moved in the history of baseball. But now, they might just go for this thing. For much of the last 10 years, pitching has plagued this team and it still rings true. This team is in desperate need of another starter or two from the deadline and another couple of bullpen pieces. In the nation's capital, the Washington Nationals are set once again to be sellers. The main piece for this team to sell is Jamer Candelario, so let's just see how much they can get in return for the player. Heading back west, let's take a look at the Oakland A's and what they could possibly sell from this very poor roster. The A's will probably be looking to sell anything and everything, so players like Trevor May, Shintaro Fujinami, Paul Blackburn, and Burt Rucker could all find their way out the door. If only they could sell the team along with their players. Staying in the west, let's talk about the all-star game host, the Seattle Mariners. The Mariners are just in search of a few bats. The pitching side has been phenomenal and are just a few bats short from being right up there with the front runners within this division. Luckily, they have a lot of players who are massively underperforming and will most likely find that form by the end of the year. Still, the team could look to a middle infield type and grab Tim Anderson or Paul DeYoung from the Cardinals. Would love to see this team grab a DH type as well. Maybe a Randall Gritchick or Adam Duvall would be a value additional to the team. And finally, the New York Yankees. Another team in an interesting spot as they're most likely playing for one of those wildcard spots. Unfortunately, a lot of the issues on this team stem from poor performances and injury instead of lack of good players at the position. The Yankees could use an outfielder, especially in the absence of Judge. I would love to see this team go for a guy like Brent Rooker, Lane Thomas, or Randall Gritchick just to give them another consistent bat and someone who can play the field for the time being. And that wraps it up for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.